I can't bear the smell of lilies. I remember that when I was a child, I was never aware of death. But then my dog was knocked down by a driver who was drunk. And we buried him amongst the lilies at the bottom of the garden. Mom, what's happening outside? Nothing, sweetheart. But the house is... It's nothing to worry about, sweetheart. Go and entertain Grandma, yes? Frank, that gravy's sticking. You must stir quicker. But outside... Don't be soft. Chin up. I remember a winter a long time ago when I went on a trip to stay with my Aunt Agatha and her husband and they were very pleased to have me around because they couldn't have any children of their own and they desperately wanted a child. I think we should try it. There's no money. All that's left is in Mum's house. Grandma, look at this. There's not even much of a house left. I think we'll have to sell it to pay for a home. She can't stay here, not with her mind going. She can hardly see. Even then, I don't think it'll cover the costs. Not with the housing market the way it is. What other options do we have? I've tried exercises, diet changes, heating my balls, cooling my balls. Listen, sweetheart, last week I took Mum to the carol service at St Agatha's Church. She didn't want to go, but I thought it'd be good for her. Wearing looser underwear. I've stopped smoking and drinking. I've lost weight. I even gave up riding my bicycle. After the singing was over, I wanted to take a, a closer look, so I did. And there was a little notice on the wall saying all the things that Agatha was a patron saint for. Earthquakes, fire, disasters. And there it was, underneath disasters. Childless people. St Agatha's the patron saint for childless people. I've given up everything I enjoy, and ten years on, we're still without children. What's the point? And that night, I had a dream, where St Agatha told me that it wouldn't be a problem anymore. We wouldn't have to worry about difficulties conceiving. Lunch in three minutes, everyone. Sorry, Jules. I need this chair for the dining room. It was December 1937, and I was 17. And when I got to Arkansas, I met a beautiful boy. He lived down the street from my aunt. Ed. Sorry, son, I need that chair for the dining room. You can have it back after lunch. Thanks, big man. I was in love with this boy so badly. We would buy tickets for the furthest place the bus would go and just sit on the bus. It was the best way to be away from other people. And one crisp, cold day, the bus got stuck in a snowdrift on a long, empty road miles from anywhere. And the driver had to walk to get someone to tow us out. So we were really alone on that freezing old bus. And we just talked for hours on end. Or oh, we wouldn't talk and would just enjoy being together. Me sitting up and he would lay his head on my lap. And then, after we'd been waiting for hours, he looked up at me with his big eyes, his beautiful big brown eyes. And he said to me in such a contented voice, he said, doesn't get any better. And he was smiling and so happy. Just the two of us on that funny old bus. Lunch is ready. Looks good. Yes, lovely. 
Grandma, you're at the head of the table. Wonderful. Now, where are my boys? Where's Edward? He can't have gone far. He's probably changing his knickers. Now, Jules, red or white? Right. Who's going to say grace? And as the time went by, I realised that although he loved me and I loved him, and we were happy, we were very happy together, that he wasn't really attracted to women because he preferred men. And I wasn't angry or disappointed because I knew that he loved me and that we were better off not going out anymore. And then it was time for me to come back home to England because it was springtime. And I was sad to leave him behind, even though I knew we'd both be better off this way. So it was our secret. And he couldn't tell anyone because it was 1937. And sometimes I'd get letters from him and I'd write back. And then the letters stopped coming. I forgot the cabbage. And then I had a letter from my aunt, my aunt who couldn't have any children of her own, saying that he'd killed himself by putting his head in a gas oven, and nobody knew why. But I knew. And when she told me, all I could think about was him smiling up at me on that cold bus with his beautiful big brown eyes, saying, it doesn't get any better. And I thought, he's right. It never gets any better. Are you all right, Sam? Not really. It just dawned on me that we've only got a few minutes to live, and I'm sure we've all got things that we would rather be doing than sat around here waiting, so I'm sorry. Frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak. 